As an astronomer, I feel blessed to have seen the skies from some of the most remote observatories in the world, in exotic places like the Atacama Desert in Chile, the island of La Palma, and the Karoo Desert in South Africa. The night skies seen from these places are dazzling beyond description, yet none impressed and touched me as much as when observing the heavens from Bumba, a village in the north of Senegal. There, with a brilliant three-dimensional star canopy above, the nightly sounds of nature, frogs, insects, donkeys, mingled with the sounds of village life, the smells of food and a smoldering fire brought to me by a sudden breeze. A full multi-sensory experience, and it reminded me that our understanding of the universe is profoundly grounded in our human perception. At first sight, and that expression speaks for itself, astronomy is a very visual science. Our only window to the universe for many millennia has been through visible light, light that we can see with our eyes. But we humans are not purely visual creatures. As I was sitting under the night sky in Bumba, I could see the stars, but I also wondered what they would sound like, how it would be to be near them. We should not forget our other senses, such as hearing, smell, taste and touch. Sometimes we are blinded by our eyesight. Too much focus goes to visual stimuli. Let's open our other windows to the universe. Let's explore with our other senses to make sense of the cosmos. Close your eyes for a while. Think of the voice of someone you love. You can pick up that voice among the voices of a thousand different people. We can also recognize a person, a place, food, by using our sense of smell. Smell is closely linked to taste. Our sense of taste helps us to avoid dangerous foods so we can stay healthy as humans. And then touch. Our skin is the most forgotten sensory organ, but think of a kiss on your forehead or a loving embrace or the first sun rays on your face after a long winter. We and our senses evolved on our planet. Our whole human experience is defined by them and our brains and imagination developed with them. Now, let's tune these senses to outside of our Earth's atmosphere. Our human bodies are adapted to living on our planet and space is a hostile environment. The emptiness of space makes it our sense of touch, smell, taste and hearing cannot directly perceive the universe. But nothing can stop our imagination from exploring and making sense. There is a whole new and unexplored sensory playground out there for which light that can reach us from very far is the messenger. All the light we can see in the night sky comes directly or indirectly from stars. It could be reflected sunlight on the moon or on a planet in our solar system, light emitted by a star a hundred years ago, or light from an entire galaxy, an island of stars millions of light years away. And all that starlight gives us information, not only about what the universe looks like, but also about what it feels, smells, tastes and sounds like out there. First of all, it is generally cold out there, very cold. But there are zones where it is scorching hot. The dots of light you see in the night sky, the stars, are very hot, typically thousands of degrees Celsius on their surface and millions of degrees Celsius in their interior. Have you ever wondered what outer space smells like? Trying to smell in space is dangerous. Space is mostly a vacuum, therefore there aren't many molecules to smell 
and the various fluids in your body will quickly balance out with your surroundings. The air in your lungs will expand violently. Your saliva will evaporate from your mouth and then your blood will boil. A spacesuit is no luxury item. It allows you to survive. Astronauts, after coming back from a spacewalk and taking off their helmet, have noticed the celestial smell on their spacesuit and they have described it as hot metal and burnt steak with hints of gunpowder, raspberries and rum. And much further away, using light as the messenger, astronomers were able to identify a chemical in a big dust cloud at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. On Earth, this chemical is responsible for the flavor of raspberries. So we can presume that space tastes like raspberries. Could be worse. And let's now tune our ears to the cosmos. Our universe is full of sound. In the depths of space, planets of all flavors crackle and roar. Stars are ringing like giant bells and merging black holes occasionally send a chirp through the fabric of space-time. I study stars and in my research I try to understand the inner workings of the stars through their vibrations or their sounds. One could say I study stellar music to find out what the instruments or the stars are like. Stars are born, they live and die just like us. But they are much bigger. They are giant spheres of gas. Our own star, the Sun, has a volume of more than a million times the Earth. But compared to some others, it is just an average star. Stars are not only bigger, they also live much longer. A human lifetime of say 90 years is just a blink for a star. Stars can live millions to billions of years. In some phases of their long lives, the stars can get a bit unstable. A similar thing happens to us humans. Just think of puberty or a midlife crisis. In these phases, the stars start vibrating. They get sound waves traveling through their interior. These sounds are inaudible to the human ear because they are too low in pitch. But they make the stars vibrate like giant musical instruments. We cannot hear their sounds, but these sounds affect the light that the stars emit. We can record these brightness variations of the stars and thus figure out the sound waves ringing through the stars. And when we speed up the vibrations, they become audible to the human ear and we can enjoy the characteristic sound or the timbre of each star. Let's listen to a few of my favorite stars some of which you can see with a naked eye in a bright night sky. Polaris, the North Star or the Pole Star, is a rather bright star that lies nearly in a direct line with the Earth's rotation axis above the North Pole. Because of that, Polaris stands almost motionless in the sky and all the stars of the northern sky appear to rotate around it. It makes an excellent fixed point for navigation, but nothing lasts forever. Because the Earth's rotation axis moves, the celestial pole will move away from Polaris after the 21st century. The star's distance to Earth is about 400 light years, which means that we are now observing the light that left the star about 400 years ago. We see the star as it was in the past. This holds for all stars we see in the sky. When we look out, we look into the past. In fact, Polaris is a triple star system, composed of three stars orbiting each other. The brightest one is a so-called supergiant star. This huge star is indeed almost 40 times larger than our Sun, and more than a thousand times brighter. But its brightness is not constant. It fluctuates every four days. In this process, the star shrinks, getting hotter and brighter, and swells up again, getting cooler and dimmer. It is as if it is breathing, very slowly. This breathing pattern has been followed for centuries, 
and we see small variations in it. So even the most fixed star in the sky, Polaris, is a variable. Not so far from Polaris, in the northern sky, another bright bluish star may catch your attention. Its name is Beta Siphii, or Alfiq, the Arabic word for herd, like a herd of sheep. The name is appropriate because it is in fact again a triple system. The biggest and hottest star in the system is again a variable, expanding and contracting every few hours. The star is much hotter, heavier and brighter than our Sun, but since we observe it from a distance of 700 light years, it looks a bit fainter than Polaris. This massive star is in the prime of its life, fusing hydrogen, the simplest element in the universe, into helium, deep in its core. Stars are in fact factories for making chemical elements the elements that we find everywhere on our planet. And for Alfirk, this fusing will keep it going while it is humming its star song for millions of years. In the nearer future, in 3000 years, because of the slow movement of our Earth's rotation axis, Alfirk will become the new star in our celestial pole. One of my favorite stars a star I have been studying for almost 20 years has a similar breathing pattern as Polaris, but faster. Instead of four days, it contracts and expands in about half a day. For this star, you need binoculars or telescope to see it. But this is the sound of R.R. R. Lyrae. It sounds like music to my ears, and just like the voice of my loved one, I can pick it up among thousands of stars. It is a very old star, we could say it is a retired star, past the prime of its life. Yet, it is still doing very important work. It is fusing helium into carbon and oxygen. These are the two most important elements making up our human body and our understanding is that they could only have been formed in stars. Maybe in the distant past, say 7 billion years ago, this star was comparable to our sun. But today it is singing a beautiful swan song while creating elements essential for life. At the end of their lives, stars return the elements they have created in their lifetime back into the universe. For a star like our Lyrae, its end will happen rather peacefully. As the core of the star shrinks into a white dwarf star, the outer layers are expelled into space, a beautiful colorful nebula full of elements around what remains of the star. For a more massive star, like Alfirk, the end will be more violent, in a supernova, a rare and powerful stellar explosion in which the star briefly becomes a million times brighter and complex elements are propelled far into empty space. Iron is a typical element stemming from such violent supernova events. The iron in your blood, in my blood, in any human's blood, regardless of their origin, skin tone or convictions, was likely produced in the same supernova in the distant cosmic past. We are all truly blood brothers and sisters. From the remnants of previous generations of stars, the stellar graveyards, new stars and planets are formed. That is how our own Sun and the planets in the solar system, among which the Earth, came into being 4.6 billion years ago, and how we evolved on our planet from the same basic elements. We are stardust, star stuff, from the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, and the iron in our blood. Most of the essential elements of life and the basic elements of all the things we can touch, smell and taste are truly made in the stars. Now let's return to our own star. When the sun scattered light brightens up the sky 
and you can feel its warmth even at a distance of 150 million kilometers, you may not suspect that it is also buzzing with sound waves. Millions of vibrations are traveling through the sun. Thanks to these vibrations, we can get some insight into what is happening inside of the sun. And we can even get a good estimate of its age. In this way, we learn about the past, the present and the future of our own solar system. By studying other stars, we can understand more about our own star and get some perspective. Just like the much more massive star Altirk, our sun is in the prime of its life. Deep in its interior, it is fusing hydrogen into helium, converting mass into energy in the process. It will continue to do so for the next 5 billion years or so, and then it will retire, swell up, and become a red giant star for a while. Our sun will die a peaceful death, as a white dwarf star surrounded by a beautiful nebula. When this happens, our species will probably not be around to witness it, but it will be a feast for the senses. As blood brothers and sisters, we are also children of our sun. Our senses developed on a planet fueled by the sun. Our eyes are most sensitive to the light the sun mostly radiates in. Our skin is adapted to the balmy temperatures on planet Earth with its protective atmosphere at the right distance from the sun and our ears, nose and taste buds are adjusted to the pressure and composition of our precious atmosphere and biosphere. Now you understand that when I raise my gaze on a clear night, I experience much more than the magnificent view of twinkling mysterious dots in the sky. Looking up means turning inside. I recognize my pet stars and I imagine their immensity, their heat, the gigantic forces in their interior. I imagine their sounds that tell me about their long history making new elements that form the basis of life, of our human life. And I know that my own human existence, my body and its perceptions are intimately linked with the universe we observe today. Thank you.